In this video, we're going to discuss bean life cycle methods. So when the spring container first starts, there are a couple of things that happens. First off, the beans are instantiated, and then the actual dependencies are injected. Next, you have some internal spring processing that occurs with the bean factory. And then you have the option of adding your own custom initialization code. Ooh. And then at that point, the bean is ready for use. So you can call methods on it, do work with the bean, so on and so forth. At a certain point, the container is actually shut down, meaning your application is shut down, like with context.close. Then you also have a chance to call your custom destroy method. And that code will execute before the actual application is stopped or before the application actual uh, beans life cycle is over. The one thing I want to take a look at is those two orange sections here, um, adding your own custom methods. What you can do is you can add your own custom code that happens during bean initialization. So you can call custom business logic. You can set up handles to like databases or sockets or whatever. You can also do a similar thing when the bean is actually being destroyed or destructed. So again, you can call any custom business methods or you can clean up um, any handles that you may have to resources like databases, sockets or files. So basically what this provides here is that during the bean lifecycle, Spring allows you to um, call some of your custom code. And these are what we call hooks where you can actually hook in code to execute during bean initialization or bean destruction. All right, so now how would you do this? Well, you simply make configuration entry in your XML file. So for bean initialization, you make use of this attribute called init method. And then you give the actual method name that you would like for Spring to call in your bean. Now this method name can be any method name. Uh, here I call do my startup stuff. It could be called foobar or whatever. And we can also do a similar thing for the destroy method. So again, you simply make a uh, configuration entry here in your XML file. You simply give the method name you want Spring to call for destroy. And again, it can be any name. All right, so this all looks kind of good. What's the basic development process? So again, I love my step-by-step. -step. So the first thing you do is you simply define your methods for the init and destroy in your uh, Bean class. Then the next step is you simply configure those method names in the Spring configuration file. And in the next video, uh, we'll dive into Eclipse and we'll actually walk through this development process and we'll test out this feature. So I'll see you in the next video.